Hey there, and welcome back to another episode of A Cup of Joe. <laughs> My name is Joe Escovito, and with me today is Oliver Arscott. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you for having me. So Oliver is the senior content uh, manager for uh, Cushman Wakefield, which is one of the largest commercial real estate companies in the world. So we're going to go ahead and get right into it. Why should commercial real estate companies be investing in content marketing? Yeah, so it's a great question. Um, I think the interesting thing about working in such a, um, a service-oriented industry is that really you're, you're competing on your expertise, mm -hmm. right? Um, so if you have um, those expertise amongst your team, you're far more likely to be uh, considered a, a viable um, a viable partner for a lot of these big corporates who are looking um, for whether it's um, from the occupier size, whether it's uh, redesigning their office space, or whether it's finding a new location for their headquarters or their flagship retail store, they want those expertise. Mm. And I think one of the best ways that a business can demonstrate those expertise is through content marketing. Okay. I think the other part of it is that really in CRE there are three main players. Okay. And so when you have three players who are all multinational, mm -hmm. global, yeah. powerful, cover pretty much every aspect of, um, of CRE, yeah. you need to find a differentiator. And mm -hmm. so I think content marketing, again, demonstrating those expertise is a really good, good way to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, fundamentally, um, content um, is, is, is great here because we play in so many different channels. You know, mm -hmm. we play in, uh, in the retail space, in the industrial mm -hmm. space, in logistics, in offices, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Data centers is a huge one here in Singapore. Mm -hmm. And as a content marketer, that's really exciting because I can go, well, you know, we can we can take all of these individually and create content marketing strategies around them. Mm -hmm. Whereas for a lot of people, a lot of my sort of opposite numbers in other companies, you know, they're stuck with one particular yeah. section of an industry and that can be um, quite disheartening. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the, the, the world really is our playground and uh, that's quite, a, quite an exciting thing as a content marketer. Okay. Now, I think you are in an exciting place, but also a challenging place because you're working with so many different markets, so many different mm. industries, so many different audiences. Mm. It can be challenging to create a content strategy. Mm. So how do you go about creating a content strategy with all those elements in play? Yeah, it's, it's a really good question. Um, our, our content strategy um, has developed really around this idea of developing knowledge in depth. Um, we have here in Singapore alone, about um, just over 1,500 people. Um, across Asia Pacific, 14,000. Globally, around 60,000. So, you know, we have uh, a phenomenal depth of expertise, mm -hmm. depth of knowledge. That's not just focused at that C suite level, although mm -hmm. obviously those are incredibly smart folks. Yeah. Um, but we have these pockets of deep, deep subject matter expertise. Mm -hmm. So, when I came into the role just under a year ago, what I was looking at is um, a lot of content that was de being developed by our, our research team, who mm -hmm. do a fantastic job, mm -hmm. um, but not a huge amount of effort um, to tap those SME areas mm -hmm. um, throughout the business. So I really wanted to come in and, and, and engage those folks, engage them in the idea of um, being spokespeople, not in a sort of formal mm -hmm. um, communication sense, but being spokespeople around their area of knowledge. You know? mm -hmm. and, and these are people who, who, who fundamentally love what they do, right? They, yeah. they, they, they've spent 15, 20 years developing um, these, these areas of knowledge, and, and I want to give them that platform to show off. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really what we've been working on the, over the last year, um, building out a, a successful blog, um, the traffic for which has, has um, increased on a, on a lovely curve, as okay. we all like a good curve. <laughs> yeah. um, and, and really stabilizing what I would think of as that sort of top of the funnel, that discovery layer. Mm -hmm. um, the project that we're working on together at the moment, which I don't want to sort of talk too much about, but um, I think what that's going to enable us to do as of the end of this year is start to shift that focus down slightly, keep up that focus mm -hmm. obviously on that discovery layer and, and keeping these individuals engaged in producing content, mm -hmm. um, but also then start to think more about case studies around yeah. um, people profiles that show off expertise, around service line statements that are not just marketing fluff or not just impenetrable business talk, but mm. um, ways to, to, to engage people. And that means that we can start to think about um, nurture campaigns mm -hmm. um, that take these people who we've already engaged at that top level and, and move them down the funnel. Okay. No, I think that makes perfect sense, especially since a relatively longer buying cycle. So yeah. a lot of 
uh, similar companies, they forget about that. Mm. So they focus, as you said, on that, that top uh, end awareness, and they're missing out on nurturing them on kind of yeah. guiding them throughout the process. Mm. So I love that you guys are already have that in place. Yeah. Um, another thing you talked about was leveraging your internal subject matter experts, whether it be consultants, your researchers. So how do you really get them involved in the process? Because that's always a challenge in a lot of organizations. How do you get people involved? How do you get them excited about creating content? I think, um, again, going back to this idea of when I sort of came into the role, um, the, the focus was very much on, on the research team. Um, and I'm, I'm incredibly hungry for more of that research content. Mm. But I'm also aware that that research team, um, they want to be creating big cornerstone pieces that are of, of real value. Mm -hmm. um, they also are very involved in the um, in the buying process. They're brought in to meet with clients, mm -hmm. and um, and so there's that business perspective as well. And so um, their um, their ability to, to sort of sit down and churn out blog posts yeah. is, is 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 sort of more limited. But also that's not really what we want to be using them for. Right? Mm -hmm. These are people from a more of a academic background or f who, who, um, who have that sort of research capability, mm. we want them to be focusing on research. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, sourcing content um, from the subject matter experts within the business, um, it, it, it's a couple of things. It's about um, firstly creating a database of where that knowledge sits, mm -hmm. which, you know, I come from more of a startup background, yeah. I could just turn to the guy on my left and go, well, I know he knows about this, let yeah. me ask him about it. Um, in a business of this size, that's more of a challenge than you think. So actually, half the battle is finding out where these pockets sit. Mm -hmm. And then the second half is, uh, it's sort of hearts and minds. Um, it's about persuading uh, business people who are very busy. Um, firstly, that creating content is not as difficult as they think. And I think a lot of people think back to school and being forced to sit down and write an essay. Yeah. And that's not what we're asking people to do, right? It doesn't yeah. work. Um, so for me, you know, whether it's, getting them to fill in a survey type form about a particular topic that we can then take and turn into an article, mm -hmm. whether it's just sitting down with someone uh, over a recorded interview like this mm -hmm. and and plumbing them for, for, for that information, um, that works really nicely. I, I sort of uh, had a, a recent example of this, okay. talking with um, our head of offices in Indonesia, mm -hmm. phenomenally uh, successful, phenomenally experienced um, lady who's um, who knows far more about commercial real estate than I ever will um, and she but her, her mindset was well I, I just don't know what I would want to talk about I don't, I don't know what these trends are necessarily or I don't know how to translate those conversations I'm having with clients into mm. into a piece of content so we just started talking and our conversation naturally drifted on to talking about the new um, uh, the new metro system mm -hmm. in Jakarta F fantastic piece of content right mm -hmm. fantastic idea how is this metro going to change the face of uh, office leasing in, mm -hmm. in Jakarta. Now that was teased out of it because I was able to ask, ask the right questions, and she was able to identify that actually it's not that that she has that knowledge. Yeah. And so then going back and having those conversations again, it becomes a lot easier. Yeah. Right. Um, so it's that, and then I think from the marketers' perspective, it's about working out what content we need the marketers to be producing, mm -hmm. uh, making sure that we have the editorial capabilities within the marketing team, mm -hmm. um, but also just knowing that. Um, we, the marketing team will never be the subject matter experts. Mm -hmm. um, we've got some people who've been in real estate for 15, 20 years and they, and they know a lot of it, but yeah. never as well as the business. Mm -hmm. So if we can activate the business and then use the marketing team to uh, be thinking about things like course of action, thinking about things like making the first paragraph snappy, thinking about things mm -hmm. like SEO optimization, that's a far better use of our time. Mm -hmm. So I think it's that balance. Okay. That balance. No, no, I think it's that's good because you are looking at it from both perspectives, the business perspective as well as the marketing and kind of growth perspective. Because essentially you need to be looking at what are the business objectives and not just creating content just because it's you know trendy or popular, but making sure it's tied back to what is it you want to achieve as an organization. Yeah, and I think uh, that's absolutely right. And, and I think one of the things that um, we need to keep doing better is sitting down at the beginning of the business year and going, what are our major themes for this mm -hmm. year? Um, with each of the service lines and then working out how we can create a content calendar around that mm -hmm. um, rather than just it being this sort of ad hoc um, conversations yeah. and, and and that's always I think every business struggles with that right yeah. um, so having a, a stronger editorial calendar is something I'm always striving towards and it's it's um, it's sometimes easier than, than, than other times but yeah um, but you're absolutely right you want to be tying it back to the business goals to the areas that we're aiming for growth in, mm -hmm. um, rather than just gravitating towards the, the sexier topics, which yeah. are more fun to work on, but maybe <laughs> exactly. not quite as valuable. <laughs> exactly. 
Um, you brought up another good point. You guys developed a lot of research, and a lot of my clients are doing the same from a lead generation point of view. Um, so how do you go about taking a piece of research, maybe a heavy piece, and breaking it down into smaller chunks that's more palatable for different audiences? Yeah, it's a great question. And in fact, um, we have a, uh, a new head of research for Asia Pacific, and we had a very instructive uh, long conversation with him just a few weeks ago about this. Um, and I think the... Um, I think with all of us who write, whether that's in research or in uh, content marketing mm -hmm. or in marketing teams, we're all quite territorial about the content that we create. And yeah. we can all have very thin skins at times. Mm -hmm. um, and that often means that um, chopping up content into different formats can sometimes be more of a, more of a challenge because you know, people want it to be displayed in the way that they envision. Mm -hmm. and, and I've been so guilty of this in the past as well. Um, you know, I'll write a 2,000 word blog post and someone will come in and go, why have you written 2,000 words? We need 500 and here's a, um, yeah. and sort of going off in a strop. So I, I, think, um, I think it's about going back to what we were just talking about, which is the business objectives. Um, so, you know, a piece of research, so say it's, a, um, say it's insights into the Singapore retail market, for mm -hmm. example. Not all of that information is going to be of interest to everyone. Yeah. Okay. So you might have some um, some analysts who are interested in the the hard cold numbers. Mm -hmm. You might have some business leaders uh, from 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 retail who really just want to know what are the headlines, what are the mm -hmm. forecasts, um, yeah. where do they need to be placing their their bets. Mm -hmm. um, and so taking each of those audiences in turn and then creating a um, a content library around them. Mm -hmm. um, taking obviously the big cornerstone piece and, and I think that cornerstone piece should always be there and accessible I mm -hmm. think that should always be you know if, if they want it you should be able to give it to them yeah. um, but it's about how do you pull out pieces of content whether for social whether for blog posts whether for you know shorter form um, white papers um, and then creating that user journey through those mm -hmm. through those pieces so you know you might say okay we want to be focusing c-suite from retail and so to do that, we were going to create these targeted LinkedIn posts. We're going to do a, you know, a limited run paid campaign targeting those individuals. Um, and so we're, what, what would they then want to read? What's their next action? Okay, we're going to create a very snappy uh, one pager um, that they can look at. And that's going to have our five key trends. Um, now off that, you know, maybe we have a, a simple capture form so that we're then capturing their details, mm -hmm. we can then have that nurture campaign through 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 an EDM strategy um, where maybe, you know, one of those calls to action is download the full report, mm -hmm. but maybe it's not. And, I, and it's, it's again about, um, it's about using the analytics to, to work out what people are engaging with. And then mm -hmm. each time you, you do it, you do it a little bit better. Yeah, absolutely. And I think one thing we talked about before is really pulling out the key takeaways and putting that front and center yeah. because a lot of the times, I mean, yes, you will might engage into a headline. But if it's a very you know lengthy piece and it takes a long time to consume, they want to know kind of what are the, the headlines or what are the key takeaways. Why would they even take the time to read it? Yeah. Um, so putting that on your landing pages or your ads or your, your EDM copy, everything just to entice them to take that action to download it or view that document. It's the sort of Alice in Wonderland effect, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to let your user go as far down the rabbit hole as they want to go. Mm -hmm. But you want to have the most important stuff up, up top. Now, that's either going. That's going to be two things. It, it'll either encourage them to carry on going down. Mm -hmm. If they go down, that's great. More engagement, stats, all good. Mm -hmm. But also, if they don't, that's that has to be fine too. So you want to know that if they're only going to give this campaign three minutes of their time, you want to make sure that those three minutes are used as effectively as possible. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, you obviously create a lot of different content. So what is your approach when it comes to content production, whether it be always on, campaigns, ad hoc? How do you go about it? Yeah. So I, I came from quite a, um, a dogmatic campaign background where um, everything was closed-ended. You know, you, we, we sit down, we have a formal brief, we, we'll put together the, the copy doc. Um, that will all be executed. There's a, you know, in, in a sort of um, lean methodology, um, uh, daily sprints, that sort of thing. Um, you could tell we had a web developer on the team who was encouraging yeah. us to do this, um, and then a very, um, a very firm um, sort of feedback loop at, at the end, rinse, repeat. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's absolutely a time and place for that. Mm -hmm. However, I think particularly, I think that's particularly useful when you have maybe a slightly more transactional business mm -hmm. when it's, it's slightly shorter sales cycles. Mm -hmm. I think for us, what I'm interested in is is, is mixing that um, campaign discipline mm -hmm. with um, with always on. 
And I think Always On is a place where talented content marketers can really have a, a big impact mm -hmm. because that's about what we talked about earlier, creating this knowledge in depth and, and, uh, and tapping into that for content that is going to appear in people's timelines day after day after day. Um, and it's, it's going to be engaging, it's going to be differentiated, it's going to be um, assorted. Um, so you're not just doing 800 word blog posts three times a week forever and ever, mm -hmm. uh, but you're doing videos, you're doing interesting polls, uh, something we're, we're testing at the moment. Um, and and I think there's a there's a lot of room to play there. Um, and you know we we're, we're creative types. We want we want to play. And yeah. I think always on is a great way to do that. Campaigns um, you can you can have slight differences when you when you iterate, but ultimately you're trying to optimize. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, and then for the ad hoc stuff, you know I think that's where content marketers honestly that's where they drown. Mm -hmm. You know, and you have a marketer who'll come to you and say, um, we did this event and. You didn't know that event happened in the first place, and yeah. then they go, "We've got these photos, and we need you to put this up, and we maybe need this in three languages, and we need it yesterday." And <laughs> um, and that is stuff that you need um, you need to really set your your, your boundaries for. Mm -hmm. um, and and again, I think like a lot of creatives, I'm uh, I'm not particularly good at setting my boundaries, and mm -hmm. not pretty good, not, not very good at saying no. Yeah. Um, and I think that's something that uh, that we can all all get better at as, as creatives. Mm -hmm. um, and I I look at the salespeople here who are very good at being you know decisive and, and telling people when it's time for them to go away. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, and so I think you know that that's an important skill to develop. Mm -hmm. um, that ability to go, yep, the, this is this is the the time of the week that I'll be working on this type of. Mm -hmm. Content, or I'll have an hour a day where I can entertain these requests and you need to get these into me then or some sort of um, way to maintain your sanity mm, yeah otherwise um, otherwise that alongside the campaign stuff you're gonna have no time for the for the exciting bit which is the always on yeah and I think it's about guiding them as well and telling them why you're doing that yeah I mean well, you don't want to be, you don't want to be dogmatic in that sort of way you don't want to just you know um, say it for no reason for yeah sure um, and uh, and I think they they can understand if you can if you can help to demonstrate um, your load, the mm -hmm. campaigns you're working on, yeah. have tools that you invite them into that will show them that visibility and that mm -hmm. they can actually engage you, um, with you on. Um, we use um, we use the sort of Microsoft um, projects um, uh, platform mm -hmm. for, for, for that, and that's a, a really sort of good way for us to to come together um, and to create tasks, and it's the, that kind of Kanban board um, mm -hmm. approach. And I think that's good because they can just see your workload and then and then yeah. work with that rather than doing everything over email and you know one day we'll get off off the email platform and everything will be will be better but moving content onto something like that whereas there is a even if it needs to be done that day there is a process mm -hmm. um, rather than it being ad hoc yeah no that makes sense I think showing them the process helps them understand why it is that you're doing that yeah. um, now you talked about the kind of the growth of the blog. Could you maybe share some practical tips or learnings that you've uh, picked, taken away from that growth and what do you think it happened? Yeah, um, so I think, um, so from the blog perspective first, um, the idea of um, discovering these pockets of knowledge is great because it allows you, from a sort of practical perspective, to compete for these keywords mm -hmm. um, that maybe you otherwise wouldn't, wouldn't mm -hmm. do, right? And I go back to talking about um, where our, um, or how broad our potential market is mm -hmm. in terms of topics. Um, that's a huge opportunity. So our best performing blog post um, is on um, uh, Japanese earthquake-proof buildings. Okay. Um, which, you know, is, is, a, is, a, is a great piece of content because it's touching on a topic that maybe others don't, yeah. and it links into what we're able to to to, to deliver. Mm. Um, so it's about you know obviously you want to be smart from a content um, a content marketing perspective, analyzing the keywords that you want to be competing for, mm. um, and then assigning those to the particular um, mm -hmm. business units. Um, I think we've just gotten better at our SEO optimization, our writing for mm -hmm. for search. Um, I think we are, um, you know, there, there are, some of these metrics start to become vanity metrics. Yeah. Um, and and actually, the, the metrics that I'm more interested in are um, our bounce rate and time on page. Okay. Um, and we've seen those metrics improve um, because I think the quality of our writing has gotten better. Mm -hmm. um, and I think what we're doing is we're um, we're we've got a, a much stronger focus on 
um, CTAs, not just contact us now for to talk about this opportunity, yeah. um, but you know maybe here's another is a better piece of content for you to read or or, or something related. Here's uh, you know a, a case study, and that's something that we're excited about. You know further down the road being empowered to do more of. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I think that's, that's got better as well. So I um, came in really just wanting to drive our, our visit numbers, mm -hmm. um, but actually here in Asia Pacific, as we all know, um, with a little bit of paid, you can, you can really drive, you know, knock those yeah, out of the park yeah, yeah, yeah. with not much effort. Um, yeah. And the business is very happy, but you as a content marketer have a bit of a guilty conscience. Yeah. So um, I think what you want to be doing is focusing on these more meaningful metrics. Um, and then I think, Beyond that, uh, really looking at some of the, the cornerstone campaigns that we've uh, executed on over the last uh, six months or so, um, our International Women's Day campaign, mm -hmm. um, where we worked with 90 Seconds uh, mm -hmm. to create some fantastic video assets. One main video asset that we put on the landing page, but also a number of smaller ones that were more market specific. Mm -hmm. um, the tone of voice was, was wonderful. I, I really like working with um, companies like 90 Seconds because you're not farming out your strategy to them and asking them to come back with the whole thing. Yeah. You're you're able to keep control of that and then work with them on the execution. And it's really about working where your expertise lie. Mm. You know, I'm I'm not a videographer. I yeah. couldn't have done half of what they did. Um, but equally, we have a really good idea of what our um, our messages around DNI, and i um, and also about what we wanted to see um, from from those videos and, and what our unique selling points were. So um, so that was exciting. And then the whole kind of multi-channel campaign that we ran around that, mm -hmm. whether that's events, um, whether that's the social media part, whether that's the, um, the, the landing page, um, and then coming together at the end and going, okay, what worked, what didn't. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah, the, the stats are great, but also what's great is when a CEO of a major um prospect comes up to you at a meeting and goes, mm. that was uh, a wonderful campaign, you really knocked out of the park and mm. showed, us, showed us how to do that sort of thing. So um, that stuff makes everyone happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then, and then I, the, the other one that I've mentioned is, um, is around uh, events and, and um, Cornet, which is one of the big events that we, we do every year in Hong Kong. I come from an events background, that's how we first met. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's lovely to be on the other side of the desk. Um, <laughs> But also from having got that conference background, it's nice to be able to know what's good practice and what's not. Mm -hmm. And so we went into Cornet last time with a, uh, a new service offering that we were able to promote, mm -hmm. um, a really good flashy report that we created around that um, service line, that mm -hmm. offering, and then tying all of the activities into the main theme of that intelligent portfolios, mm -hmm. um, which was very successful. Um, and then again, having that uh, that kind of multi-channel approach and working with a, um, a small agency, boutique, boutique agency, not on strategy again, but on um, managing our paid campaigns. Mm. Um, again, I, I really like this idea of, um, of limited outsourcing of the execution mm -hmm. um, rather than um, going out to an agency and yeah. giving it away because uh, it's, it's no fun uh, from my perspective, um, you know, giving that all away, but also it just allows you to, to stay accountable, to learn, and I think it's incredibly important as content marketers that we continue to learn. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the challenge if you just work with an agency is that sometimes that can get lost and you become a, an account manager for that agency yeah. rather than um, actually continue to grow your skill set. Um, so I think, um, you know, all, all those together, um, our, our, our strategy, our, our tips have been um, try and spin a piece of content as many ways as you can. Mm. Try and have one big cornerstone um, that everyone can, flock around and you can really tie everything into um, try and um, and work with partners where it makes sense particularly on execute execution um, and make sure that you have that sit down at the end where you take a breath and you go okay what did we learn what are the statistics what are the meaningful st statistics yeah. um, and um, what's the feedback from the rest of the business and how can we make sure that next year we, we, we improve and continue mm -hmm. to do better yeah I mean there's so many practical tips in there I think some of my favorites were I think looking at the Japanese Earthquake blog piece. Mm. I think one of the reasons that worked so well is because it's more of an evergreen piece. So yes. that can be applicable now, it can be applicable you know, for years down the road. Mm. And it's still driving traffic because it's very practical. And when you said other people aren't doing that, mm. so you guys are the source of information for that. Mm. Um, and it fits nicely with the offerings that you guys have. Yeah. So I thought that was quite nice. Um, the other thing was around call to actions. Mm. Now, this is a big mistake I see many organizations do when it comes to blogs. They either have no call to action, yep. or they have a call to action that's like, uh, contact the salesperson. Mm. So you're immediately jumping from, okay, I came across your website, I found this helpful, um, to going straight to the salesperson. Yes. Which doesn't 
necessarily happen a lot, um, especially if you go back to the journey you talked about. So I love that you have, once again, you're guiding them. So if you're interested in this, you'd be interested in this, or you sign up for the newsletter, or something that's a kind of smaller kind of action for them to take, mm. rather than jumping into the hard selling. And, and I think the, um, the thing I always think about here is that um, with the technology that we have at our fingertips, mm. we can do whatever we want, right? Yeah. The, um, the, the, the sky really is the limit in terms of the way that we can nurture, the way that we can use, you know, use coupons to track and everything mm -hmm. else. And, and here in Asia Pacific, uh, well, maybe excluding Australia where I know their, their email um, sort of signups, that's slightly more challenging, but uh, certainly here in Asia, um, you can, you have the freedom to to do what you want without many restrictions. Mm -hmm. um, now, obviously, as a responsible marketer, you don't want to be spamming. You don't want yeah. to be doing any of that. But you can you can try things, and I and I think you know my interest is really in it, in this idea of moving towards an account based marketing model where mm -hmm. you're able to um, to identify who are the decision makers, who are the um, the influencers in, in that decision making process, and then how can you create these content campaigns where they're engaging in content, and you're not pushing them straight to a phone call, you're not yeah. um, you're not setting it up as an opportunity in Salesforce. You know, this is a um, a process where because the sales process is so long, we have that time, we have that ability, and, mm -hmm. and I, you know, we're not B two C, and thank thank goodness we're not B two C in a lot of ways. Um, no offense to the B two C marketers out there, um, <laughs> but um, but we're we're in a fortunate opportunity, a fortunate place, and I, and I think. Um, we we um, we shouldn't jump the gun. Let's not be premature. Let's 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 nurture and have this idea of nurturing and providing content at the right time. Um, that's interesting. That's engaging. That comes from different sources. That's not just coming from the same spokesperson over and over again. Yeah. Um, and that's and that slowly gets them towards a place where they might inquire mm -hmm. uh, or that's suitable then to have a conversation. Uh, you know, with lead scoring these days, you can you can do all this. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just about being patient. And I think patience can sometimes be, be a challenge you know if you if you're thinking on a quarterly basis or you just want to get these numbers in but yeah but it pays dividends it really does yeah absolutely and I think another good point you brought up is content marketing at least for me the goal should be to get that conversation to get that meeting to get that mm. to get that phone call whatever, whatever it is mm. and not necessarily to make that sale but it's to influence that sale it's yeah. to build that credibility up front so when you have that sales meeting people are already aware mm. of you know your expertise they have trust in you and so it's much easier for the salesperson to go in and have that conversation. Sure. Um, so that's one of the benefits of content marketing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, now, obviously, we've had the opportunity to work on a project, which I'm very fortunate for, to you for. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd love to get your thoughts on what are your thoughts on the collaboration thus far? Yeah, it's been great. And look, I, I go back to what I was talking about um, around oh, a couple of things. Firstly, the value of, um, of outsourcing um, both the, the parts that are more execution focused um, that allows you to focus on the uh, on the horizon, mm -hmm. um, but also just learning as a content marketer to, to, to let it go. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I um, uh, I obviously as an arrogant content marketer think my writing is the best in the world, and um, <laughs> and it can be often a, a difficult process to to pass the reins over to someone else yeah. to do it. But it pays dividends, and I think here in Singapore. Um, there are some, some fantastic writers when you, when you find them. Yeah. Um, and I think with the right direction, which is what you're able to provide, mm -hmm. um, there is uh, some really quality work that's being, that's being done. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it's, it's been, how long have we been working together? A couple of months now, yeah, I think, months, on, this, yeah. on this project. Yeah. Um, and the, the output has, has been great. I think we've um, grown in our knowledge of how we can optimize mm -hmm. um, the, the, the processes. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm phenomenally excited about what's coming at the end. It should be yeah. October time. Yeah, yeah, it's very exciting. Uh, I think everyone will be finding out that soon once uh, yeah. Oliver makes an announcement. So yeah. thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you very much. Anything else? Otherwise, no. Um, I, I think uh, I'm I'm phenomenally proud to be part of this community. Um, you know, I think uh, as as content marketers and as as creatives, we can often. Um, you know, have our head down and locked into the day-to-day -day grind. And we were talking earlier about the the ad hoc stuff that um, that just fills up your calendar. But taking the time to sit back, to, mm -hmm. to to think, to engage with the rest of the community, with the great work that you're all doing out there, mm -hmm. um, uh, it's uh, it's really heartening. And I think we can learn a lot from each other, not just um, within B two B or mm -hmm. within 
CRE, yeah. um, but uh, but across both. And you know, I um, we had a lunch um, a couple of months ago yeah. with some other content marketing folks, and even in that conversation, it was great to hear what people are doing in you know the consumer space mm-hmm. and some ideas about how we can translate that that across or, or, or in different segments within within B2B. So you know, the more sharing, the better, and I think what you're doing is is great with this sort of format. Awesome. All right, well, thank you so much, Oliver. Thank really you very much. Appreciate you sharing your insights. Yes. And if you enjoyed today's session, please feel free to share it with someone who might find it helpful. Uh, be sure to subscribe, and we will see you next time. Thanks again. Thanks.